Good morning. I'm gonna take my glasses off so there's no glare. It's Read Aloud Saturday, and today I have a different kind of book. It's a nonfiction book, and there's a series of these books, um, and it's You Wouldn't Want To. And it just kind of is almost like a graphic novel nonfiction text. Um, this one is You Wouldn't Want to Be a Civil War Soldier, A War You'd Rather Not Fight, written by Thomas Ratliff and illustrated by David Antrim. And um, this is not only just a fun book if you're interested in the Civil War, but it's also a great book for research if you have a project that you're doing or something like that. I'm not going to read the whole book today, but I'm gonna show you some of the highlights of this book, and then I'm gonna talk about some of the other books in this series. So um, this is just a funny little cartoon image um, of a Civil War soldier. The introduction says this. You are a farmer living in a small town in Connecticut. After Abraham Lincoln is elected president in 1860, 11 southern states worry about the issue of slavery and they decide to secede or to leave the United States and form their own country, the Confederate States of America. Within a few months, war breaks out. In the North, people want to preserve the Union and get the seceded states to return. In the South, most people want to preserve slavery and keep their new independence. In the spring of 1861, President Lincoln calls for volunteers to sign up for 90-day enlistments in the Army. You decide to serve your country and join the Union Army. Everyone expects the war to be over in a few months, but in fact, you will remain in the Army for the next four years. In that time, over two million men will serve in the Union Army, compared to about 700,000 for the Confederates. Casualties for both sides will total 620,000 deaths, making the conflict America's bloodiest war. So already in this first page, there are some facts about the Civil War, about why it happened, and then um, just about how long it went on, how many served in the army for each side, and how many casualties there were. Um, and here's the picture, it just shows the Confederate flag and the American flag. And then as you go through the book, you'll see there are maps and there are um, cartoons. And you'll see that in nonfiction text, there are captions, there are diagrams, there are maps. Um, so there's a lot of features, we call them text features in nonfiction, that help you understand the text. So it's just a fun little book each section of the book has a caption, like there's one that says, will I have my own bedroom? Unfortunately, you will be spending most of your time outdoors. You share a small two-man tent, which is really two halves that button together. When you are marching, the tent is taken apart. You carry half the tent and your tent mate carries the other. If you are marching long distances or fighting a battle, you won't have time to set up your tent and you will often just sleep on the ground. And then it goes on to talk about keeping clean, what they wore, um, what they did in their spare time. It talks about different games they played and letters they wrote. Um, and there's a section on the first battle of the Civil War. There's a section about the fact that there wasn't just an army, there was a navy in the Civil War. So that's kind of cool. I'll show you that page talks about the boats that were involved in the Civil War in the Navy. And then um, it also has, just like any nonfiction text, it has a glossary, which is like a mini dictionary in the back of a nonfiction book. So it tells you about what some of those words that maybe you didn't understand meant. It also has a list of important Civil War battles where you can make a timeline of Civil War battles. And then finally, it has an index. And what's important about an index in a nonfiction book is that, let's say you just needed to find information for some research on what Civil War soldiers wore, what kind of guns they used, and how they got paid. 
Well, you could use this index to just look for those items only. So you don't necessarily have to read an entire book when you're using a nonfiction text for research or for a project. So this series is called You Wouldn't Want To, and it is a really fun series. And if you are into something specific, you can look to this series and this book just gives a ton of information. This one about the Civil War. But there are also other books in this series and I'm trying to see, I think, oh, titles in this series. You wouldn't want to be sick in the 16th century. You wouldn't want to be a pirate's prisoner. You wouldn't want to be a pyramid builder. You wouldn't want to be a Greek athlete. You wouldn't want to be an American pioneer. Um, you wouldn't want to live in a wild west town. And oh, you wouldn't want to be a medieval knight. So those are just some of the titles in this You Wouldn't Want To series. So check it out. And um, these can be found at the public library. You can probably rent them on um, the public library app for your Kindle. Um, or just make, mom and dad, it might make a good Christmas gift. Okay, have a great Saturday. Bye.